Rhonda here from Nelson Interior Soapery. Today I thought I would show you how I've gone and made my beautiful candles. So I think I've made about 110 this weekend. So just um, a quick snap of them all so that you can see what we're doing. Um, we did originally have a different sort of candle look. We were doing, you know, like a cream base at the top, but lots of people were asking me for colors and I really wanted a candle that was different, that was really pretty and just caught the eye. So then uh, this idea came to my mind and I'm really in love with it. Um, so we've created the labels and everything. Um, I will do a video on branding to actually help you next. But for now, today is all about making this absolutely amazing amazing candles. Now let's get started. So we're going to start by popping all of our candles onto the table. So the small ones that I'm unboxing now, these are really tiny ones from a company called Aroma. And I'm going to put these in some of our little sets. So we do do some gift sets and we will be doing some um, candle ones as well. So these will be in sets and every now and then with big orders, I will actually give away uh, one of these for free. Um, so these are a really good idea for these. I have actually bought several cartons of them. So I think I have a couple hundred, so I do need to use these up. And then the bigger ones that you can see these are actually extra large ones and they hold over 400 grams that um and these come from pure candle supplies and i really love them because they have a nice round sort of scooped um bottom on them so that's something that really attracted me to these and then i will actually be doing a man's range which will be coming in a matte black um drum sort of candle that i will be getting from aussie candle supplies so yeah, so that's basically where I'm going at the moment. And I also do um, a tin range as well. So anyway, we'll set all these up and get going. So here's my wax already. So we're using a 464 soy wax. Um, this one I think I've got from Aussie Candle Supplies. And I also have all of my candles now set up, the small white ones, and then of course the extra large ones in the white. I'm absolutely loving them. They are so pretty. And um, I will be doing some tin as well. And here are my wood wicks. We only use wood wicks. And of course, the beautiful black tops that are going to go on top of um, my white jars. So um, we'll get started and measure up everything. So with here, I'm just putting all of my wax into my silver container. I try and do lots of 1500 grams because when I do that, I know exactly how many candles um, that is going to fill and it does fill exactly and I have nothing left over usually. So um, yeah, so sort of try and find your measurement that you need because you don't wanna have half a cup left. It is a bit of a waste unless you're going to be using that half a cup as your testing um, candle because you do need to test them. When you change the fragrance or colors or even adding dyes, you will need to test them to see that they work because you'll be really upset if they don't. So anyway, we've measured it all up and now we're on to the next step. So now we're going to be doing the double boiling method. So this is how I do mine. I work in a warehouse, so of course um, we don't have the stove here, so we have to improvise with what we have. On the table here, I do have all my little embeds um, sitting here ready to go. So with my candles for these new ones that I'm doing, I've decided to put a little embed on each one, which just gives it a bit of character and makes my candle stand out from others on the market. So I'll just melt my my um, wax down to the right temperature and here you can see that I'm going to be starting on my little pine cones these are for my cashmere silk candles and I've just added a tiny bit of brown which I actually use the dye blocks for mine um, and it works really well but you know just don't add too much because adding too much can affect um, your wick and your burn so that's really important not to do that I've made that mistake and after many testing figured that out myself um, but you can see here that they do look really really nice once we actually do these and I don't put heaps on the top I usually just put one or two and then this will actually create um, just a different look per each candle so when someone picks it up they'll know that this is my cashmere candle 
So now I've set everything up as I was doing before I was setting it up. I had to go back and um, add it in the tin ones because silly, silly me. Of course, I actually did forget to add in all of the tin. And um, that is really important for me because the tin ones are my biggest sellers. They hold about 90 grams. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm just cleaning each one out. So when you get all your candles, they will be um, sent to you from a big manufacturer and usually they've been in warehouses. So it's important to um, clean them. I just put a little bit of spray of alcohol onto um, a microfiber cloth and then I wipe them all out. And actually what it does as well is it does help you with um, sticking down um, the tabs on the bottom of what you're going to use, whether it's a cotton wick or a wood wick, but mine are wood, as I said earlier. So um, I actually do put, you know, the wood in the little clip and then from there I'm going to stick them on the bottom and I actually use Aussie stickums. That's what I actually um, stick down my uh, wicks with. They're all different sorts that you can use, but that's just my preferred. I have tried um, hot glues and things like that, but I really didn't like it at all. It just wasn't for me. So I just think, you know, um, the stickums are made for candles. So obviously um, they adhere really well, but everyone has a different choice. But this is what um, I choose to do. So anyway, we'll clean all these out and then we'll get going and popping in the wicks next. now everything is cleaned up and we are ready to look into popping on our tabs um, for our candles so there's the stickums we're going to be used and the wood wicks and of course we need the little clip that we're showing and the wood just slides in the center of these clips for anyone that hasn't used them the wood wick company i'm using is called pro uh, wick and i actually put, i think actually sorry it's called pro wood wick and i actually get those from aroma candles so now it takes a bit of a process to do this, but I just like to do it all exactly perfect. So for the large ones, I'm using quite a wide um, wood wick, and then I'm going to be popping a booster in the middle, and the booster just helps the main candle do its job. I have tested these, and the um, melt pool is fantastic. The scent throw is really good as well. So I'm really happy um, with the wood wick that I've, that I've chosen. And honestly, I went through so many different ones and that's the same as yourself when you're testing you do need to test so you don't need to waste heaps of wax you can you, you literally just put the wax in one and um, don't stick down your wicks if you just sort of push it in the middle like you slice a little um, hole through it and then push the wick in and pull it out and then you can put a new one in if that one doesn't work so that's what I do and it's a really good testing thing so that you're not wasting heaps and heaps of um, different waxes and jars. So now what I'm going to be doing is organizing all my wicks and then putting the little stickum on the bottom. And luckily for me, a lot of these jars do have like a little circle on the bottom, which helps you to um, find the exact center. 
And the good thing about wood wicks is you don't need anything to hold them in place because they stand up nice and straight. So they don't need any holders or pegs or clips to keep them centered for you. So that was a good selling point for me because it drove me crazy with the other wicks. And also I think the wood wicks just have a really nice look and it does add to a bit of luxury to the candle. They are more expensive, 100% they are, and they're more fiddly. So, um, and I really do believe that the woodwicks need a bit more testing um, because sometimes you can get a batch that aren't as great as the batch before. So you do need to test and um, double check how you're going with the wicks. So anyway, I'll leave you to watch me pop them all in and then I'll come in back soon. actually pop this bit in here so that you can see how I do mine so I actually kept three different jugged containers because each container each um, candle container has a different size wick so what I've done is created them um, in each particular container and then that way um, I know exactly what's going into what and then there's no confusion um, because the two smaller ones are quite similar in size but just going up one size can really change your burn so that's important as well and um, and then of course you know like I said I'm using the stickum and then I'm literally just going to be undoing it sticking it on the bottom um, like so and then you just peel off that little bottom so it's like a double-sided stickum and one side obviously sticks to um, your inner candle base and one side will stick to the clip and then all we're going to do is just find the center um, of our vessel and then we're going to be sticking it in so that they look cute. So these are the tiny ones, of course, and you can see that it's stuck in the middle and the tiny ones have a little ring in the inside, which is really handy. And actually the big ones also have that. And then I will show you the tins and the tins have three little dots so that you know in the center, that's exactly, you know, where you're actually going to be putting um, the candle wick. So here I am actually showing you that there is a little circle in the middle as I just talked about and I popped my wick in. So I'll gather all of the rest of my wicks and pop them in. So I'll just leave the camera run so that you can see me doing that. But for anyone that's interested um, for scents, there are different scents that some, um, you know, have different categories and they will definitely have a different hot throw than others, meaning, you know, like um, how it smells. So if it, you know if it burns really well and it smells well others have a really light smell so I have actually used some coconut ones which aren't great for the smell so then I had to get rid of those and try out another one so that's what you might have to do um, I'm choosing to use um, for a lot of these pure candle supplies but I also do use aroma and also Aussie candles um, so it just depends on ones that um, you find from Aroma, I use one, a salted caramel, and it is my favorite one. Everyone for the last couple of years has said, I love that scent, and I just sell so many of them. Um, but then um, for Pure Candle Surprise, there's been a few that I really do love. So yeah, so just try out new companies and see what you think and um, what you actually like. But from the Pure Candle Supplies, there's a new one that I'm trying, which is Mango, and I have mixed that with a Banana Crush, which that's going to be my new one, which is called um, Bamango and it smells divine. Like I've made it, tested it, and it really, really does smell beautiful. So I can see that one being a really popular candle. So come up with your own ideas and something a little bit different so that you stand out in the market of candle making.
show you the little silver one I was talking about before so here um, it has the three holes which is really easy to be able to pop in um, the wick and set it in the center which is really really good so that's what I like to do so now I'm going to be doing some oils just to make my embeds so there's only a small amount of oil and no fragrance so I don't put fragrance in the embeds I'm just checking to see when the temperature is going to be right so um, for this particular 464 wax it does say that Fahrenheit it needs to be 135 to pour it so um, if it's not that it actually just ends up in a really messy finish and it's not very smooth at the top and believe me I know I've made so many mistakes with this wax and um, I was ready to pull my hair out I was like oh my goodness I can't do this but anyway in the end after many many testing and lots of advice from um, different other candle makers as well so do um, take advice most of them have done lots of trials too and they'll often say how about trying this and then that's actually what really helped me get going with the 464 um, it did, like I've said before it's not my preferred wax to use but the coca soy I just couldn't get it back in because of COVID um, a lot of wax supplies are out of stock so that's a bit devastating but you know for now I'm using this one but I will be going to using um, a different blend which is from Pure Candle Supplies um, in Melbourne so that will be my next wax once I use this but I do have two boxes at the moment of 464 so I will use them up first they're both beautiful waxes I just think the 464 is much harder to use um, in my opinion so what I'm doing here now is I'm just getting it to the right temperature and then I'm just going to be adding in my dye block. So I get the dye block from um, Aussie Candle Supplies and you don't add the whole block in, you just shave in tiny little bits um, and then it will melt into the wax. So um, when you're putting in the dye chips, you can actually put them in at the 185 when you're adding the fragrance, it can be the same. I usually put mine in just before I take the wax off the burner that's fine um, and for this one we're adding in the brown because what I'm actually going to be doing is just like I said making the little embeds and there's no fragrance that we need to worry about too much so we're just going to mix it until all of the dye chips are totally um, dissolved in um, or the dye shavings I should say have totally dissolved my embeds aside to let them dry and now what I'm actually doing is I'm working on my main candle mix which is going to be the base for this candle so for starters I'm working on my cashmere silk and my cashmere silk is going to have a really nice kind of light tan and it almost has a pinky tan kind of tinge and do remember that what you see in the pot now is not what it's going to look like it will go from this really dark color to a really nice pastel type color so whichever dye you're using it will lighten up a lot so do test that and see how you go you can drip a tiny bit of it onto a bit of paper and let it dry first and then that will give you an idea of exactly what it's going to look like but when you add the fragrance in as I've done you really do need to keep mixing for two to three minutes just so that everything binds in beautifully and then you're getting exactly you know um, what you want and because this whole process will affect the end of the candle so you don't want your um, customers buying the candle and then they look really pretty but they don't smell great um, me I'd rather buy a candle that was a little bit more ugly but smelt better so and I'm sure a lot of people would have that attitude as well so mixing mixing is definitely the way to go now let's start pouring into our jugs so um or into our vessels i should say so i've got all my vessels here i'm really slowly pouring in so i'm pouring at 135 degrees fahrenheit later on i did actually find that i thought 138 or 139 was better because the time you start from the first candle to the end candle um especially if you've got a really big mix then of course the temperature is going down and once it gets down 
um, under that 135 it leaves the tops not as perfect as you would like so that is the one tip that I can give is maybe pour just a weeny bit hotter um, and then uh, you know it won't sort of go under that 135 because that is definitely the golden um, temperature in 464 wax and every wax has a different temperature so if you go from this to a coconut blend um, or a different blend you would definitely need to test it so my advice would be to you know test everything and make sure you are 100% happy um, before you know um, you finish everything up and one advice that somebody did give me from one of the groups which was really fantastic when you're using a booster like this you can just get a paper clip and you can actually pop the paper clip on the top of the two wooden wicks and it actually holds them together until it melts so that was a really good tip so um, there's some really good tips and clever things people come up with so here I am um, finding the paper clips and I'm literally just going to be popping them on the top. So you just pop them over the two and make sure obviously the wax isn't going to be over that so don't put them too low near the wax. And then once it's totally dry, um, take them off. You can just you know cut your wick um, the way you want to cut it and then of course remove the paper clip and then you can use that paper clip again for next time and you only really need to use the paper clip when you're doing like two wicks in one or you're doing a booster in the middle like I'm doing for these ones because as I said these are um, extra large vessels so they do hold over 400 grams of wax so they are quite um, a large one but yeah this was a really good trick so I'm definitely glad I listened and found that trick so now we'll go on to seeing how beautiful they look so this is when they're finished and you can see how smooth and gorgeous they are especially when um you know the end product when you're using the exact um uh, temperatures but i have to tell you i did actually make a mistake and do one of the temperatures at a lower temperature and i was not happy at all it really was not smooth and i was really disappointed so temperature is really important to make them look amazing so that i'd really pay attention to that next time so i decided to go on to my next um one and i just thought i'll keep this in the video just so i can talk about a few things so once again like i said if we can recap everything so we're going to get the wax up to 185 at least and then take it off your stove and then mix it around a little bit and then pour in your fragrance making sure the fragrance is poured in around 185 you can do anything from 175 to 185 but one tip that someone did give me as well before you take the temperature on it make sure you stir it because what's under the bottom or in the middle will be different from the top which didn't enter my mind silly enough but that was a really good tip as well and then mixing it for about two to three minutes is what I've been mixing my 464 once I've added the fragrance in and then once you've done that you've got to let it sit until it gets down to about 135 to 138 because that is going to be your pouring temperature and the pouring temperature will really affect the top of the candle and how nice it looks and it will affect also the burning of um, the candle but I do have to say that this is only my experience from me making candles you may have a different experience and of course all waxes will have their different um, pour temperatures and melt temperatures so you do need to check um, with your supplier if you're using a different one but I think 464 is quite a common um, soy wax to use and in the end once I did figure out the temperatures and I did so many testing and many fails like we all have I really did find that it was a good wax in the end when I was getting the not so perfect finishes it was really just um, that my process wasn't good and um, that is one thing that I think you definitely learn um, with them and then the one thing I have to say is make sure you set it aside for 24 hours after you've put them in the vessels as well so you poured it and it's all done set them aside before you cut the wicks because the the wax will still be a little bit soft so you don't want to cut it when it's soft and then ruin the top and once I've done this as well I also did um, 
set my candles aside for two weeks. So mine will be curing for two weeks. They do suggest a two week cure and I really think it is good to cure it. I mean, as everyone knows, I'm also a soap maker and the same thing with soap. I cure my soap for six weeks. So I think all of these products that we are making by hand do need to have a cure time just to give a better result in the end. So, and for me, I'm more interested in my customers getting a really beautiful product so that they return because I am a business and return customers is what any business wants to have a successful um, company. So hopefully that's helped you, giving you those few, few steps. And like I said, you know, using your thermometer, you can use a meat thermometer or anything else. You don't need a fancy one. And um, I thought I would show you, these are my little embeds as well, and they look really pretty. It does take time, and I do make a lot of the silicon molds myself. Some I don't, but a lot of them um, I do. So some tops drying here, and um, you know, they do look beautiful once they're done. I was really excited to see the end, and I was really happy because over the years I've made many candles that haven't worked. And after doing many, many more testing and watching so many YouTube videos um, and talking to lots of people on the Facebook groups, I've now figured out what I really love with this. So um, because 464 was not my normal wax. So you do need to, like I said, retest again. Um, and some of these I did redo because I was not happy with the tops at all. So um, I did actually scrap them and start again. But I'm sure that you can agree that the, the finished product does look really beautiful. If you have any questions, please don't feel scared to ask me. Um, of course, I'm here to answer your questions. And I hope that we can all educate ourselves in this fun and exciting making of products. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye for now.